Whether it's Ichigo taking on Grimjo, the captains fighting the Espada, or Aizen taking on the entire Gote 13 himself, the Arankar arc has its fair share of amazing battles. And it's not hard to see why this arc is often considered to be the pinnacle of Bleach's popularity. Some of the imagery and characters involved in this arc, whether that's the Espada or the White Sands of Waco Mundo, are considered to be synonymous with Bleach itself. Over the last three videos, I've tried my best to rank and chronicle what I believe to be the top 10 fights from each third of this mammoth storyline, from the Arankar invasion to the Waco Mundo sub arc to the fake Karakura Town fight, and the links to those videos are in the description below if you haven't had a chance to see them yet. For those of you that have, I really appreciate you joining me on this journey, and now the time is here. We're coming full circle to rank what I believe to be the best of the best, the absolute top 10 fights in Bleach's Iran Karak. This was a pretty tough list to make. I basically had to pick what I believe to be the cream of the crop throughout this entire storyline, and there are a lot of fights featuring a lot of awesome characters and really cool abilities on display. And for those of you who did watch my previous videos, I have actually made a couple of alterations to those lists. It'll be interesting to see if you can pick out from this video what I've changed. Make sure to let me know in the comments below. But after going back through the list, looking at your guys' comments, taking on board what you said and re-researching the fights again for this video, a couple of them were shifted around, and I'm very happy with this final list. Of course, it is just my opinion, however, so as always, I'd love for you to put your lists in the comments below. It is time for you guys to let me know which fights are your absolute favourites. And before we begin, guys, if you're not subscribed to my channel yet and you love Bleach, this is the perfect place for you to come and get Bleach content like this every single week. And we're incredibly close to 60,000 subs as well. So if you want to help push me closer to that milestone, I would really appreciate the support. According to my analytics, over 60% of viewers are not currently subscribed. So if you want to help start flipping those numbers, I would really appreciate that. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up as well if you enjoyed this content, whether you agreed with my list or not. It helps get the video out to more people, more Bleach fans, and that is always a good thing. And finally, I have a Patreon as well, the link to which you can find in the description below if you want to help support me that little bit more to ensure I can keep bringing you guys videos like this on a weekly basis. That would be absolutely amazing. So a huge shout out to everyone who is already a patron. You're really helping me out. And so without further ado, it's time to tackle the ultimate top 10 list of Arankar Arc battles, taking into account everything we've learned so far from our journey in this little series we've done. And yeah, let's get on with this. All right, so starting this list off then at number 10, and when I began this series, this is not a fight I expected to see anywhere near this close to the top, and that's Ikaku versus Edorad. And in my opinion, this fight absolutely destroys all other Fraction battles in this arc. I think it's just so much better than the rest of them. And there are a couple of reasons for that. First and foremost, when I went back into the manga to research this video, the artwork for this fight just blows me away consistently every time. Kubo does a great job job really showcasing this battle, showcasing how fairly even these guys are at the start and then how things just go to a different gear when uh, Edorad activates his Resurrection Volcanica and you see these great visuals, these double page spreads, these splash pages of the two of them duking it out in midair and Volcanica is absolutely hulking, Ikako looks tiny in comparison, um, but you know that Ikako is being fueled by essentially guts alone and bravado and just the 11th division mantra, and it really adds another layer to this battle. You really get to see what it means to be a member of the 11th division properly for the first time in a battle to the death. Um, and Ikaku's great here in my opinion, this is easily his best fight in the series, he uses his smarts, swapping between his katana and his scabbard, I really enjoy that and he doesn't seem foolish and reckless here like he does a little later on in my opinion. In this fight you really get the sense that he loves battle but perhaps not at the expense of the mission, and I really enjoy that. And I love that he uses his Bankai, his Bankai reveal of Ryumon Hozaki Maru to this day is still the quintessential Bankai reveal, in my opinion, with all the best tropes that I absolutely want to see 
from the reveal of a Bankai. So I really love this fight. I think it all comes together really, really well. Edorad is a fairly respectful opponent, and I think the two of them put up a great fight that ends in a really well-deserved victory for Ikaku. And so coming in at number nine, we have the epic bloodbath slugfest between Kenpachi Zaraki and Noitra Jiruga. Now, this fight may not contain the most development for Kenpachi, but Noitra certainly is a fascinating villain with a great backstory that's explored here. And don't get me wrong, Kenpachi does get some awesome moments to shine as well. The very nature of a battle like this means we're gonna get some fantastic artwork, and we absolutely do. Kenpachi gets some great panels, as you would expect from Kenpachi. Massive wide grins, crazed laughter, and just awesome clashes. And it is really refreshing to have a basically pure sword fight, or, you know, at the very least, a clashing of blades uh, in amongst the rest of these fights, where a lot of them have some kind of special abilities, like the Byakuya versus Zamari fight and the Mayuri versus Xyloporo fight. So here we have a pure raw battle, which I do actually really enjoy. Noitra's Resurrection Santa Teresa also looks really cool as well, especially when he gets the six scythes. That just looks really badass. This fight, for me, it does kind of push the limits of my believability, I think, when it comes to Kenpachi constantly, seeming like he's on death's door. Almost every chapter seems to end with either a hand being pushed through his body or him being sliced across the chest with a blade and it being like, is Kenpachi dead? But of course he's not, but you know, that's all part of the charm of Kenpachi. Um, and this fight makes it onto the list mainly because it feels so different from a, a vast majority of the fights in this arc. And it is nice to see Kenpachi really being pushed and really being challenged. And it is also quite cathartic as well to see Neutra, who up until this point has been extremely smug and mostly just getting his way actually have this cathartic moment where he realizes, actually, I might not be able to take this guy down for once. So this fight makes it onto the list for me, compared to the other captain battles in Waco Mundo, because of that sense of it being an even contest, which I really like. The other two kind of feel like stomps. This one does feel a bit more even. And you, get a, you do get a nice character moment for Kenpachi as the fight goes on when he realizes, you know, I might actually die here. This is really the first time we've properly seen Kenpachi in a battle to the death. You know, I don't think he was probably ever too worried about Ichigo actually killing him. It's more just they, they take some serious injuries. And against Komamura and Tozen, he's mostly in control the entire time. So here it's really nice for him to sort of stop and think and be like, I might actually die here if I don't kind of, you know, actually end this fight because we know that Kenpachi loves to drag fights out that's its whole shtick that's why he had the bells in his hair all that sort of thing the eye patch he just made fights more enjoyable and longer for himself but you get that moment of I guess realization where he's just like yeah I, I can't keep this up anymore or I will actually die so it's fascinating to see that he, he does kind of um what's the word like care about self-preservation over the enjoyment of battles. I thought that was quite enlightening. But outside of that, there's not too much in the way of development, but I don't think there really needs to be. This fight is all about the popcorn enjoyment um, and it delivers in spades as far as I'm concerned. For the eighth spot on this list, we're gonna move over now to the fake Karakura Town arc and we have Kyoraku and Ukitake versus Stark, the premier of Espada. I think reception on Stark overall is fairly mixed and it is obviously because of this fight. People had extremely high expectations for the Primera Espada, but whatever you think of Stark, I do really enjoy this fight. And again, maybe I'm biased. Kyoraku is my favourite Captain Aizen notwithstanding, and Stark is one of my favourite Espada. So I love the interplay of swords and guns here. I think they have a really nice fight with really cool choreography. And of course, it's so good seeing Kyoraku and Ukitake actually fighting side by side to take down a really powerful enemy. Ukitake showing us the power of Sogyo no Kotawari to combat Stark Seros. Some people have complained that Stark and Seros is a bit underwhelming for the first Espada, but honestly, I like the creativity. Him using guns is just really, really cool, as simplistic as that may be. As I mentioned in the last video, when I first saw his Resurrection, I was like, okay, that looks pretty cool. Then I saw he had a pair of guns, and I was like, this is taking things to the next level. So it was really nice to see the three of them duking it out. It's a shame, of course, that Ukitake is so randomly taken out of the fight by Wonderweiss, but the final showdown between Kyoraku and Stark 
is brilliant on a character level. It shows you exactly the lengths to which Kuroko is willing to go to win a fight. It shows you exactly what Keiten Kyokotsu can do. And it gives some nice depth to Stark as well. So I do think this fight probably is a little bit divisive, but for me, I really enjoyed it. The seventh spot on the list goes to a fight in the Waco Mundo arc. And similarly to Ichigo versus Grimjo round one, this could be contested as to whether this really counts as a fight at all, as it is another beatdown. And unfortunately for Ichigo, he is once again on the receiving end, as this time we're looking at Ichigo versus Ukiora, and this is round one. And again, I think this is just so iconic, Ichigo taking on Ukiora after finding out that he is the one who coerced Orohime to Waco Mundo. And I just love it, Ichigo going all out right from the very beginning, activating his hollow mask and shocking even the statuesque Ulkiora. You have to remember as well that Ulkiora has been presented to us a couple of times in the arc at this point as this kind of very stoic and mysterious villain in the background, hands in his pockets all the time, you don't know how powerful he is, you just know he's powerful. And now he finally gets the chance to show it off. Great artwork here again, as always, as I mentioned before. I love the shot of Ichigo wielding the massive Getsuga Tensho. It's positioned really nicely and drawn so well. Um, and it's just really cool when you think about it, to think about the dichotomy between this fight and Ichigo's first battle in the Waco Mundo arc against Dordoni, where there he's really trying to hold back everything he can. And of course, he eventually wins by releasing his full power. Here, he's released his full power right from the get-go, and unfortunately for him, it does not go well. Ulkiora revealing himself to be absolutely fine after being hit by a Getsuga is still pretty iconic, firing the Sero, and then eventually nearly killing Ichigo by stabbing him in the chest with his bare hand. It's pretty brutal stuff, but it really helped to cement Ulkiora as the major villainous focus of the Waco Mundo sub-arc, and of course set up the eventual battle between Ichigo and Grimjo. Perhaps what I like most about this fight, however, is how it really plays with viewer expectations. People were really expecting Ulkiora to be the first Espada in this battle, to be revealed to be the strongest enemy Ichigo had to take on, but when it's revealed that actually he's only the fourth Espada, again that really helped set the tone for the rest of the arc. And these are where, unfortunately, the dropped expectations come from Ulkiora putting on such a great display, only to be like, yeah, there are three more characters stronger than me, only for them to really feel like maybe they aren't. It is a little disappointing, but this fight, again, much like the Grimjo one, really helps set the stage for some awesome stuff moving forwards. And rounding out the bottom half of this list, coming in at number six, we have the very final battle of the Iran Car arc being Ichigo versus Aizen. You know, I have my issues with this fight. I absolutely love Aizen, so it is a shame, in my opinion, to have to put his final battle at number sixth overall. Um, it's way too short, it is a bit one-sided, it's basically designed to be a real cathartic moment where Ichigo finally shuts Aizen up after three volumes, essentially, of Aizen dominating the good guys. It's now Ichigo's turn to repay the favour. Unfortunately, it is all wrapped up in about three chapters, which is way too short for a final battle of any kind of description, really. However, everything that takes place within these three chapters is iconic, in my opinion. It is iconic. Dangai Ichigo looks utterly incredible, one of Kubo's most sublime designs we've ever seen, in my opinion. It's amazing how you can tell he is that much more powerful simply by the way he looks, the, the sort of serious expression on his face, the mature expression on his face, the look in his eyes, as Gein mentions, the longer hair, the chain on his arm. He's a totally new man here, and he absolutely demolishes Aizen. It's really great seeing things like the final Getsuga Tensho, the farewell with Tensa Zangets, the way he smashes the Hardo 90. It's all completely iconic in my eyes. Aizen's final twisted, demented transformation into this Hogyoku amplified monster. In my opinion, I love this because I think this, this fight symbolizes a little bit more than is maybe let on. The entirety of this arc, the Iran car arc in general, is all about Ichigo's descent into Hollowdom, and that is exemplified by the final battle between Ichigo and Ulkiora. From that point on, however, is Ichigo coming back to the light, essentially, 
and then by the time you get to this fight he really has conquered everything whereas Aizen is now an, a monster with three hollow holes signifying that he has kind of fallen from grace and become everything that Ichigo was maybe heading towards but he's come out the other side and now he demolishes Aizen and then Urahara sweeps him with the seal and it's just a it's a it is a good fight even if it's maybe a little unsatisfying, a little anticlimactic, it kind of ends pretty quickly, but I still enjoy it nonetheless. Now, remember I said at the start of this video that if you've watched some of my older videos, some of my rankings will have changed around a bit because I have had some time to reflect, and this is one of those rankings. Coming in at number five is the final battle between Ichigo versus Grimjo, round three, essentially, in Waco Mundo. And this fight, yeah, it is pretty great. It's a seminal battle in Bleach. There's no getting around it. I reread it again in the manga, and yeah, it's nice. It's a nice, even clash that, again, like, like I mentioned in my original video, feels quite fated to happen. It felt like they had to fight to bring a close to their rivalry, or at least close it as much as they possibly can. Ichigo using his full power, accepting his hollow powers here, and yet Orohime, the person he has come to save, is now terrified of him. And this again shows you the great kind of conflict with this arc. Ichigo is heading towards hollowdom to save the person he cares about, but in doing so, what is he becoming? And that, of course, is really exemplified in the final Ukiora battle, but this is that first major step where he's freely using his mask and looking really frightening and terrifying for Orohime. Grimjo, as I've mentioned, he's good in this fight. I enjoy that he appears a bit more mature, the two of them. Their rivalry is at a peak here, but Grimjo is also acting, in some ways, a little more respectful. Um, maybe even honourable, taking the fight elsewhere so as they don't get caught up in it, allowing Orohime to heal Ichigo so they can have a proper throwdown. It's really good stuff for both of their characters. Um, and yeah, I said it before that I don't think Grimjo's resurrection is the best, but I do like the sense of movement, I do like the sense of agility and the sense of scale. It's just an all-round really good fight. In my opinion, it is kind of the all-rounder fight. It does everything pretty good. Nothing is crazy good in my opinion, nothing really stands out to me as being insane, but the whole fight is consistently pretty good. I'm not overly keen on the ending when Ichigo is able to overpower Grimjo just because Orohime kind of tells him not to die, that's pretty cheesy, but other than that, it's a really well done battle. Coming in at number four, we're back in Fate Karakura Town for Hisagi and Komamura versus Tozen. And I absolutely love this battle, and I wasn't entirely sure what you guys thought of it, but it does seem like from the comments of the last video that that sentiment is essentially shared. Um, it's a really powerful fight that it, it provides great closure, in my opinion, to this uh, storyline. And I mentioned it before that Hisagi's popularity exploded because of the fake Karakura Town arc, but really no one has ever cared about Komamura and Tozen, and yet their story is so compelling. I absolutely love this fight, Tozen has completely lost his way, accepting hollow powers, and yet, as I mentioned before, every line in this battle poses some kind of moral or ethical question. Tozen being like, you know, you despise me, you call me corrupt for taking hollow powers, yet Ichigo has hollow powers and you guys love him. And of course, Komamura retorts with, well, Ichigo didn't choose that path. You abandoned your friends for more power. That's what I call corrupt. And it's just so good because through their fighting, all three of these characters come to understand each other that much better. And I think, honestly, this is incredible storytelling. Um, some people were a little disappointed with the outcome, Tozen's resurrection, kind of turning him into a cricket sort of bug thing, but I really liked it. I think it kind of looks awesome um, and it fits with the theme of Suzumushi. Um, and of course, Hisagi getting that kill on Tozen, jumping on him, stabbing him in the head. It's pretty gruesome, but I actually really like how it plays out. I think it makes complete sense that Tozen would lose his way. It's pretty poetic, overtly so, you might argue, but it is pretty poetic that Tozen doesn't see the attack coming when he gets his sight back. And as Hisagi says, the blind Tozen would have seen this coming a mile away. So I really love the fight. I love the depth it adds to all of these characters. Tozen is not just a sort of black and white bad guy. There are shades of grey here. He calls into question the morality of Soul Society as an organisation, and Hisagi questions whether or not Tozen really fears anything anymore, or if he's too far gone to really understand fear. So, 
I absolutely love this fight. Again, the visuals are great. Great shots of Kokujo, Tengen, Mio. Tozen's Resurrection, Gria, Grigio looks pretty cool as far as I'm concerned. And this is a really solid fight that rounds out their relationship in an excellent way. Before we enter the top three, guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done already and hit that like button if you are enjoying the content, because like I said, it really helps me out. So thank you very much. All right, coming into the top three, then the top three best fights in the Iran car arc of all time. And this one is in some ways the inverse of the last fight in that it's not got that much depth. Really, let's be honest, it doesn't. It is more about the flash and about the fun. And in my opinion, it is worth it. It's fantastically well done. And that's Aizen versus the Gote 13. Aizen really gets a chance to flex here. He gets a chance to show you why he's the main villain, how powerful he actually is, in that he takes on just about everybody the captains, the Visards. They all face Aizen in a big battle royale. And I love this. I honestly didn't expect we'd get anything like this when I was reading it weekly, but it's really cool to see. You get great character moments, Tenken and Tengumaru coming together to try and kill Aizen in one move. The captains teaming up, thinking they've got Aizen defeated, but of course, Aizen's legendary Kyokus, so he gets moment where he reveals that actually he's been using it the entire time, and they're now attacking Hinomori. It's incredible stuff, and in my opinion, is the major reason why people like Aizen. Um, this is where the memes come from, the trolling memes, but I think it's all in good faith and I really, really enjoy the battle. There's lots of really great stuff here. It's cool seeing the Visards getting involved, but Aizen kind of manipulating the battle to wrap love in Rose's whip and then cut him down, cutting Lisa's Hagaro Tombo in half. There's a lot of creativity on display here as well, which I really enjoy. Komamura trying to take on Aizen and Aizen questioning the very definition of power as he rips him in two. It's just really, really well done. There's a lot of great stuff on show here. And I like to think that at least half of the characters involved all get some kind of nice moment. Soifon bringing out the clones, Kyoroku rising out of the shadows behind Aizen, Shinji revealing that he's reversed the battle. I mean, like, it's really great stuff. As with kind of most of the fights in the fake Karakura Town arc, you kind of have to question why maybe some of them didn't use Bankai in this situation. Obviously, there are some who have a kind of area of effect Bankai, like Kyoraku or Shinji, where it wouldn't really work in their favour, but you've got to imagine there's someone else who could. I think we only see them from Komamura and Hitsugaya, if I'm remembering that rightly, but regardless, it's a great fight and an absolute spectacle showcase for the main villain, Aizen. And my number two pick for the best fights in the Iran Kor arc is another battle from the Waco Mundo arc, and it's Rukia versus Espada number nine, Araniero. And again, it's funny that the technically weakest Espada gets such a good battle, but in my opinion, it is really up there with the best fights in the entire series. Um, in my opinion, it's kind of similar to the Hisagi and Komamura versus Tozen fight in that there's actually not like a huge amount of crazy fighting going on. The real impact of this battle comes from the emotional stakes um, and the amount of character growth the characters undergo. So Rukia, in my opinion, doesn't get a better fight than this. This is the pinnacle of her battles and she really has great characterization here. So the fight obviously starts out with Araniero posing as her old mentor and one of her closest friends, Kaien Shiba, who Rukia harbors enormous guilt over believing, you know, she killed him, even though it was the right thing to do, even though he wanted that by the end of it. She still harbors immense guilt, and uh, Araniero tries to play that against her, blaming her for Kaien's death, using those emotional weaknesses against her. Um, but Rukia shows incredible resolve, in my opinion, in this fight, and it actually made me really like her character, where I was kind of indifferent on her before. But the moment where Araniero is like, okay, so you killed me, so now let me kill you, it's only right, and Rukia says, absolutely, I will happily give my life for you, but not until I've rescued Orihime. That's the reason I'm here, I have to save her before that can happen, and I love that, because you know how much guilt she harbors. It's a huge part of her character up until this point. But even then, she still values that friendship with Orihime. And I, I think that's fantastic. 
And then the fight gets really going. There's a great sort of creepiness factor to it when Kayin is acting erratically, almost stabbing Ruku in the face. And then there's like double speech bubbles revealing that not everything is quite as it seems. Rukia then outsmarts him by using Kido to reveal his guise. And you discover the truth. Aranero is in fact essentially wearing Kayin's face as a mask, which is great and creepy and eldritch and everything in and of itself. And he's actually a monstrous accumulation of over 30,000 hollows. And it's brilliant because Rukia then like tries to fight with a clear head, but the, 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 the odds are still stacked against her. You know, Aranero activates Glotta Noria and just essentially defeats her immediately, but thanks to her Shirafune ability, she stabs him in the head and kills him. And it's brilliant because I think this is one of the toughest fights a hero has ever had to face in Bleach. Um, I think Rukia, you know, Rukia is genuinely on her deathbed by the end of this fight. Um, she's absolutely battered, she's absolutely bruised, but it doesn't matter because she knows that Kayan's heart is with her, not with Aranero. And I think it's fantastic, it's just really well written. And it shows you just how, it shows you how much of a gut punch Kubo can actually generate with some incredible writing. But to be honest, the easiest decision of this entire list was coming up with the number one spot. And that is, of course, Ichigo versus Ukiora round two. And this fight, what, what is there left to be said about this fight that hasn't been said already? It is nearly perfection, in my opinion. Um, it's incredibly long, but it's unbroken. It allows the fight to flow beautifully from start to finish. And it goes places that I don't think any of us were really expecting. It starts out pretty standard fare. Ichigo versus Ulkiora. A couple of other characters arrive to turn it into a bit of a skirmish. But then things change. You leave the safety of the dome and you head outside to pure blackness. Um, and it really reflects the tone and the direction of the arc and the fight. Ichigo has reached the point of the truest despair at this point. This is where... His, if he's going to venture into Hollowdom, this is the moment. Um, and, and Ulkior is unrelenting, you know, he's here for blood. He's here to kill Ichigo and defend Las Notches. And, you know, that actually happens. Like, I think it's really powerful when you've built a series where heroes kind of get back up again as like a major trope, a shonen trope. And then you, you flip it on its head and the hero is killed. And you can't get back up again. And it's so intimate. Everything is so close and tightly knit. There's only four characters involved on the dome. Um, and it's beautifully well done. It's haunting. It's frightening. It will affect the, our heroes for the rest of the series. You know, Orihime is emotionally affected by this fight forevermore. Which I think is a testament to how good it is. Um, Ichigo's super ultra hollow Zangetsu form looks phenomenal. Ulkiora's second release looks phenomenal. It's an infernal battle of demons locked by the horns, surrounded by fire, and it's just, you know, I've, I feel like I, there is nothing more that can be said about this fight that hasn't already been said. It's brilliant. It's, it's seminal. It's one of those benchmark fights that everything in the future would forever be um, held to, and I, I, I don't even know if anything ever surpassed it, to be honest. You know, probably the closest cousin of this fight is Ichigo versus Byakuya. Um, but even, but this one just goes to new levels, and it is, it's crazy. I think it's d easily deserving of this spot at the top. I think it's just completely on another level. Whether you don't, maybe you don't really like Ulkiora, and even if you don't, I still don't think you can really underestimate the impact this fight actually had, how much it upended the status quo, how much it took some tropes of Bleach and just crushed them into nothing and really changed things around and created this really dark atmosphere that honestly would never be recreated again. So for that reason, this fight is easily my number one spot on this list. I absolutely love it. I think it, it just takes the series to whole new heights. All right, but that's it guys for the ultimate top 10 list of Iran car arc battles in Bleach. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below if I'm completely off the mark here. I am pretty happy with this list. I've got to be honest. I really am happy with it. Um, if you did watch my old videos and you're not sure 
what my alterations were. Well, I decided in the end to rank Ikaku versus Edorad above Ichigo versus Grimjo round two. I decided that that fight, I think, is just so masterfully done. And it offers something that feels really fresh as well, I think. I thought that was honestly really awesome. And another thing I changed as well was from the Waco Mundo video, where I decided in the end to put Ichigo versus Grimjo round three above Ichigo versus Ulkiora round one. I just think the fight means more, it carries a lot more weight, um, and there's better things to come for Ichigo versus Ulkiora, so very happy with my list overall, but of course if you've got your own, I'd love to read them in the comments, please do let me know. Subscribe if you haven't already guys, really appreciate the support, we are so close to 60k, and if we could make that, that would be wonderful. Um, but thank you so much for all of your support so far. Alright guys, but until next time, I'll catch you later, I'll see you then.